I'm very glad you could all make it tonight to this place, to this moment as well, for this afternoon, together for a story, right? Like humans, really warm. Warm. it is really warm. You know why that is? <coughs> and hereby I'm starting, right? <laughs> We're in a cave. It's a modern cave, I admit. To. But I think the heat is coming from this imagined fireplace right here. Because if you imagine a fireplace, we're right at where we want to go, where I want to take you. So humans gather in these places like caves since I think the beginning of time. Because in the beginning was the word, right? Remember? And the word has to do with storytelling, I think. And they gather around fireplaces to entertain, to get through the night, you know. And um, we tell stories, we take each other on, on journeys into the fields of imagination where everything and anything is possible. They're like creatures with two heads and claws <laughs> and wings are fighting and playing in the, in the garden with the, the nieces and nephews of, of the rulers of times and tides and the children of fertility and death. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure you've been there, <laughs> because do you know the name of that land? No. The name of the land is Once Upon a Time. <laughs> you've been there Once Upon a Time, I'm sure. Yeah, you heard that? Yeah. That's where we're gonna go. And I will tell you a story. So, uh, the teller spins a red thread. But the fabric is woven by everyone who listens. So let's weave together the story of the sun of the fireplace. His story begins even before he was born. And it begins on a fireplace, just like this one. This one. This one. Under the clear starry night, of a midsummer, where everyone had come together to hear this teller of stories from far away speak. Everyone was there. There was uh, the searchers, the givers were there, the, the makers and the takers, the rulers and the followers, and the free folk as well. Everyone had gathered to hear the man with worlds of words speaking. And he told, oh, how he told, he told a story of story of love, of, of compassion and rejection, and neglect of, of small men and big heroes. A story of, of everything that could possibly be and things that weren't. And once the story was finished, all these people were so uplifted and inspired and touched by this story. Well, you should have seen this. And once he had finished it, the free folk, they just started to sing loud tunes. They were like, oh, let's celebrate this. What a glorious story. And, and the followers joined in. <laughs> the givers, they were getting food for everyone to celebrate. And, um, well, the takers took. And the takers <laughs> went on to the storyteller and asked him for more stories. And the searchers asked him, well, tell us about the universe and stuff. You know, everything. Uh, and so it went on, the makers started building, creating objects to remember this, this beautiful day, even. Well, the givers, the givers were known for being, for having the biggest hearts of all of them. So when the story was finished, they still had hot tears running down their cheeks. And it, it wasn't tears of, of sorrow or regret, it was, it was tears of that resonated with the beauty of the story they had heard. So they took the dirty dishes, you know, and it was a, like a nebula around them. And in this nebula, the eyes of two of these givers met, and they recognized each other immediately. And they, they didn't need words to understand each other to find each other a bit away from the fireplace, a little bit later, where they lay on the clear, starry sky of that night. 
They were the parents of the son of the fireplace. But the rulers, the rulers were not, well, they were known for being not particularly good at anything related to the heart, right? Uh, and there was this one king, king was his name actually. He was uh, not only a ruler, he also had taker genes in his family, right? And it happened that this guy saw these two givers exchanging this look and he was astonished because he had never seen anything like this before. And he didn't really know what it meant. And he didn't know what it, what it was. He couldn't really relate it to anything in his world. There was only one thing clear about this look. It should be his, after all, right? He's king. So he followed these two people, curious what they were going to do. And when he saw them back there on the mossy grounds, he was a bit disappointed. Because he knew about that act, but in his mind he couldn't make up any relation between this look that he wanted and that act. So he kept watching for entertainment. <laughs> and, uh, and then... He saw it again, this same look exchanged between the two lovers. And that was the very moment the son of the fireplace was conceived. And it was also the moment, the very moment, where the king made the decision that would seal the fate of the son of the fireplace. Nothing, nothing, nothing. What do you have? Uh, well, actually, it is nothing. Nothing at all. Actually, it is nothing. <laughs> you will surely be useful once you've been treated. Have it placed.
And the boy grew up in this world where he lived in a palace. He was always sheltered from the weathers. Whenever it got cold, they could just turn on a heater. He was never hungry, never ever. He got fed regularly according to the high standards of the time. If he didn't like any of the food he was offered, he could simply reject it. And if he wanted a snack or a sweetie, there was always a choice at hand. Life was very different for the many brothers and sisters from his birth family. In their world, being hungry was not too unusual. They had to eat whatever was put on the table. They weren't poor as such. There was just never enough left to put anything aside. It was just enough to keep on doing what they did to support themselves. And again, and again, and again, and whenever, and again, for once, and they again, unexpectedly and managed again. to be better off. Something changed again, in the conduct of the and world, again, and, and everything again, they did to have a again, bit more and became again, part of the routine. Again, and again, they were thrown again, back into their cycle. And again, and again. But even though our son of the fireplace was wearing shoes that were made by people like his sisters, and was eating the fruit from the field which the likes of his brothers had farmed, he didn't know anything about them, not even about those people being the ones providing for his... He was busy growing up. There was a right behaviour to be learnt. This soup is... The proper language to be used. Splendid. He had to learn how to read and write. All the things he had to know. All the books he had to read. Law. Geography. Biology. Economy. And history books. All he had to know to be and become who he was supposed to want to be. There was appropriate dress to be worn for every occasion. Another war was emerging in the northern expansions of the empire. A 
barbarous enemy of unseen cruelty was threatening the only just and righteous way of life which all the people in the empire lived. The empire where king was ruling in the background. But we know the society it emerges from. The son of the fireplace, of course, knew all there was to know about the war. He had read it in the papers and heard it on the radio. They don't even have color TV. How can you speak of a democratic society if the freedom of speech cannot be played? And so he was happy to be a soldier and to join the troops in combat, fighting for the good cause. to see that the boy was becoming a useful member of society, a young man after her fancy. Ready to die, ready to kill for king and country. Show no mercy. The only good enemy is a dead enemy. For the sacrifice shall not be forgotten. No. All your knowledge is second-handed. You don't know why you do. Act on behalf of a truth you've heard of. You were being sent to annihilate the last place of proof. You went too far. This fireplace is the first and everlasting. What yours are fighting is what you want. What yours are wanting will kill you. This is the verdict. Take this sentence back to yours in your dead body.
This is really interesting. Is there no news from the battlefield as yet? This sounds as if the war has really rich, reached even the most outlandish parts of the kingdom. <sighs> Eight-year-old children living alone. Who would have thought it? Oh, that's good to sit down. <coughs> Why are you not on the battlefield? Oh, wait, what? A couple of days. Two, three days. Walk from where? I've been walking and walking. Where are the rest of your troops? Two, two three days walking. You walked from where? Uh, and you sold a gun? Sold a gun after we walked from the battlefield. You walked uh, off the battlefield. Walked away from the battlefield. But we walked off the battlefield. You have brought shame on this family. What about our reputation? When I could remember. You are a disgrace. Why did you walk off a battlefield? I was the wet and blacked out and the next thing I remember was Remember, wild people, wild, wild looking, speaking, talking, they were everywhere. Dancing all around me and pointing spears and, and music and drums, it was all happening at once. And then they, and then they, they told me, hey, what were they saying, what were they saying, they were saying, you, what I want is, what I want, Playing drums, wild people. That mm, no, was a mad, mad venture. No, there's only one thing mad here. Wild people, wild look in their eyes. You know? The, no. And then, uh, what were they saying? What they saying? What I'm Did fighting you for. Walk off the ah, what I'm fighting for is is what you want, and what you want is what will oh, kill me. The only mad people I see here is you walking off a battlefield, mm -hmm. selling your gun. And they... Oh, something else, something else. They said that you... Yours... Yours... Not... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not one of you. Cease! I'm not one of you. You will never be one of us. Walking off a battlefield, selling your weapon. Not here. You will never be one of us. Out. Leave! Time now. to go. 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 Out. Mm -hmm. Out. Huh? Out. You walked off a battlefield and sold your weapon. Leave it. Leave. Huh? Out. <sighs> Go. You came here with nothing and you'll leave with exactly what you brought with you, which was nothing. Here. Take this. Leave. Go. Out. Go. Alone on the streets, left with nothing but a bit of fabric with some curious embroidery. What did King said? You came here you with came nothing, here and, with you nothing leave with exactly and you will leave you with exactly with what you brought with you. The young man was confused. Since he had been captured, he kept hearing these voices in his head. He's not one of theirs, the voices said. I'm not one of you. You will never, be, will one never of us, be one of us, the king had said. The young man had difficulties remembering his own name. Did he ever really have one? That fabric was the only thing he had left. He had little money left from selling his rifle. 
He was hungry, really hungry for the first time in his life. But then... Must see quite a lot around around here. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, do you know much about about this? I mean, do you want about this? What you get out of me? A baby gun. Place of proof. What's that scarf on your face? What? That scarf on your face? What is it? What about it? Where did you come from? What? Where did you get it? And what about this? Do you know anything about this? What? This? There? No. No. Have a look. Fuck off. Have a look. Fuck off. You don't see it? No, fuck off. Can you not see it? Fuck off. Yeah? Are you okay? Come on, come on, come on. Let me help you up. You don't want to fall asleep here, man. Here, let me help me get you up. Oh, look at you. Let me get some proper clothes there. Even though the invitation of that man sounded a bit dodgy, the son of the fireplace followed him anyway. This man wanted to know about the fabric and where it was from. The man got him clothes and a new pair of shoes, but he didn't answer any questions. Then they walked out of the city. And they walked and walked until they came to a small farmhouse. Amidst the fields.
Come in. Hello. Why did you know the door? Because I have a surprise for you. I a surprise for you. All. What is happening? It's your name, Fab. My son. It's your name, Fab. My son. My brother. They stole you from us. They just stormed in and took you away. All we had left of you was the name that we had given you. We didn't know why or where they had taken you. And if you would ever come back, we didn't know anything, you were gone. That's when I went to the big fireplace where me and your mother first met. Took a piece of coal, drew your name on a bit of the fabric we had left for your gown. Just to remind us of your existence. For the past 22 years we've looked at that. Just wondering what kind of life you had, what you'd been up to, where you were living, just to ease the pain. Well, I've, I've been, um, grew up in a... So, that was his family. Simple people. Simple. What did that even mean when it came to people? In a palace. <laughs> a palace? <laughs> Aye. They provided for many and kept little for themselves. Well, we kings and queens. Yep. Crystal glasses and wine. They worked hard and yet still... Because their horses They found time... To care for each other. Did they teach you how to swing a sword? And listen to each other. Their lives were full of meaning. I grew up in a a palace. It's just where I grew up, you know. Tha was his name, and he was one of them. In all the books Fa had had to read, the giving people were never really mentioned. And if so, they were nothing but background for the stories. Stories which would be happening to people yeah. of another kind. Yep. No. And all the excitement. And all the excitement. They liked to laugh, and they knew about what was going on in the world. Not only from the newspapers and radio stations, but also from the songs of other peoples, and from the whispers in the winds. Yet no one of the people that Fa had grown up with did really care for them. The givers had no voice in that other world. They were seen as a mere resource. To be used and organised like stock. Fa was struck by this injustice. He wanted his birth family to be heard by the folk he grew up with. It made them want to sing, 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 The moment Fa started to sing, King's henchmen had to interfere. A thing like that could not be. The son of a king singing for some lower people. Who knew what the consequences of that could be? A fellowship, uprising, <laughs> peace, love, and unity. Peace, love, and unity around the fireplace. 
a little laugh. That's what the rulers are actually the most scared of. I don't, I don't really know, to be honest, what happened to Fa that night. Nobody knows. I think he's still singing on. Singing on for the people who don't have a voice. And there's many rumors, many stories about Fa, the son of the fireplace. People still gather around fireplaces. Even if it's electrical or gas fireplaces, it doesn't matter. In caves, they build the caves themselves, but still they come together and they tell a story. And that's what keeps their fire burning, really. His voice is singing on. And his voice is inspiring people who sit around fireplaces and tell stories to each other and have a good laugh. <laughs> and weave a fabric together, right? And the rulers are still scared of this. We wove together this fabric, right? Of this story with the red thread and other threads and all these threads from your nights. So take this fabric and wrap it around you. Take it home and be inspired if you can find something in it. Or make it into a pillow and have a nice sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> Or into a robe where you go out for a dance. Maybe that's a better idea. <laughs> so we keep the fire burning with stories like Fa's story, Fa, the son of the fireplace. And that's the end of the story. Thank you. Thank you.